So just finding your feet. Today we are working on hips today, as well as legs and feet, of course. And just exhale, bend your knees and just feel your feet. And you can look down at your feet. And then inhale, draw your legs up, your knees up, if that's comfortable and become really tall, samastiti, and then exhale, release that. Draw your belly in as you exhale, looking down, inhale, drawing everything in and up. And if you like arms at the sides, exhale, drawing the belly in from the pelvic floor up to the belly button. And then inhale, the, the inhale, the belly expands, but you're drawing up from the ground as if you're drawing energy up from the ground, pulling the kneecaps up and lengthening the spine. So it's this lengthen as the chest and belly expand. Exhale, release. Inhale. So today moving into the hips, if you want, can you bring your feet together and squeeze your thighs together as you do this lift and even lift the toes and feel this length and connection through the hips. Exhale, release. Just keep this going. Inhale. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Expanding the chest, the belly, or just the belly. Exhale, draw the belly in from the pelvic floor up to the belly button, creating a bit of a cave there. Looking down, one more time, inhale. Exhale. And this weekend being Truth and Reconciliation Week in Canada, I just want to do a land acknowledgement. So I am acknowledging this sacred land that I have the honor to be on as part of the Seychelles Nation. And this land in the northern Sunshine Coast is sacred because many coming of age ceremonies happened here before the settlers came in the late 1800s. 10,000 people lived here in the winters in longhouses doing potlatches and coming of age ceremonies in the mountain behind me, Mount Daniel and Pender Hill. Just think about the land that you are on, if this is meaningful for you. And just acknowledge what it means to you and the nation that resides on it. And the spirit of truth and reconciliation is a very yogic one. Non-harming ahimsa first is the container of satya, truth. Truth always in the container of non-harming through our speech, through our actions, through our thoughts, as much as we can have awareness of. And when we become aware that we made mistakes, it is very important to ask forgiveness and to try to heal those misunderstandings that are part of our human existence because of our lack of awareness. So building that awareness, one of the ways is through our practices of yoga. Inhale, bringing your arms up when you're ready. You can stay in that meditative state longer if you like. And exhale through the center. Bending the knees, getting into those hips, a little bit more into an Ardha Ukatasana. Inhale, coming up. Maybe starting to come up on the toes. Exhale through the center like a waterfall coming down through the front, through the sides, through the back. 
through the hips, through the legs, through the feet. Do this in your own timing. So you inhale, pressing the thighs together. Come up and onto the toes if you like, or just arms up, exhale. On the inhale, can you radiate like that sun shining behind me this morning? And on the exhale, can you release from the top to the bottom? Now, if it's comfortable, maybe stay a breath or two at the top. Squeezing those thighs together if you like. On the exhale, you can bring your heels down and press those thighs together and stretch the spine really long. This also just helps you get a nice stretch in the spine. If you keep the spine slightly forward rather than like this, it'll be a bit more traction versus um, a back arch. Inhale up. On the inhale, you can arch the back slightly. And then exhale, come down and stretch the hands slightly forward so that you're creating some traction. You can also do this with the fingers interlocked. Inhale. And I can always tell any asymmetries in my spine when I do this because one foot will just feel a little bit different. It's always nice when it feels even. And just finishing up taking a break before we go to our side to side movement. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, coming to the left if that works for you or your easy side. And as you do this, you can add on by releasing the leg of the side you're on. So I'm mirroring you with left, left knee and right arm, and then stretch through that right side. This is getting into that quadratus lamborum, your QL, inhale up. Exhale, other side. And in my experience, for those of you who have had back spasms, it's this area of the back and the hips that often seems to cause those back spasms. So just doing this side to side, you can always modify this. If you've got things going on in your ankles, you can just modify it by using a wall and just staying on one side for a while and then switching sides. Otherwise, if you can side to side, you can go up in the middle or just stay down. This is a stretch I would do at least three times a week for maintenance of the back and hips. And just notice if one side is tighter than the other, usually we'll have one side tighter than the other. And real focus here also on the legs and feet. Okay, when we're ready, we're just gonna stay on one side and just try to get into the side of the hip and this goes into the back and then maybe cross that left foot over the right. I do it like that. Or you could just bend that knee. You can move in and out of it if you're not feeling warm enough. I did a big walk this morning, so I'm feeling warm, but if you're not warmed up, you might um, wanna just keep it moving until the tissue feels a bit warmer. When you're ready, moving to the other side, you can just flip your body on your wall. I'm just switching walls. Most people don't have two walls kind of readily available, so just so you can flip your body the other side. Try to keep your shoulders aligned and sticking out that opposite hip. You can cross that leg over and just stay there. That's more intense.
That's getting in the side of the hip into the back. And when you're ready, release. Okay, Parshva Uttanasana, one side forward bend. Just gonna make sure you can see my mat. Now that I'm not gonna be going on my toes as much. So um, you can use the back wall to put your foot on, especially if you've got an ankle injury. You can use that support of the wall to help you. It's also a nice way, I'm bringing my left foot forward, to ground that back heel and keep a bit more even. The back foot also can be as parallel as you can handle balance-wise and flexibility-wise. So you can play with those modifications. Um, this is something I only understood about four years ago. Learning takes time. Is the 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 angle of that back foot will affect um, the movement of that back hip. So if you have a misalignment in your hips, it might be appropriate on one side to open the foot more and the other side less. So just make sure without a teacher looking at you specifically that you feel like your hips easily face forward. If they don't, adjust that back foot. The other thing you can do is adjust the front foot more to the side of the mat and that will give you greater balance, okay, if you're having balance issues. You can also, I welcome you to have a chair in front of you to go down to. I'm not gonna show the chair today. I did the last couple of weeks. Inhale, arms coming up. The arms can come up to the sides if you like, just halfway up if you've got shoulder issues. Exhale, coming forward. We'll just start by the hands coming down the legs and coming to your place. You might just come halfway if you can, all the way. You might bend that front knee. You might have blocks here. You might have a chair. Inhale, the arms could come to the sides or if you can, arms in line with the ears and coming up, straightening the leg if you can. Exhale, starting posi position. Parshva Uttanasana, one side at forward bend. Inhale. Exhale, coming forward. Pelvic floor draws in, lower belly, belly button draws in. Again, feel free to bend that front knee, that back foot, you can adjust it. Just find that place. Inhale up, exhale, starting position. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Fourth time, we're going to stay at the bottom. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, arch the spine up. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale. Exhale. Three times, inhale, exhale. Now we're going to turn the body towards the big toe side. So a slight twist, and you're going to feel that left groin. Now if it's too intense, and you can have blocks under your hands, you can go in your fingertips, you could have a chair or um, a stool. You're going to inhale, arch the spine, just feel that inner thigh, that groin. Exhale, forward bend. Now, you'll feel it if you're tight. If you are not tight, you won't. And just notice if you feel one side when we do the other side more than the other. And that might translate into misalignments in your hips, in your back. So if you can work with this, if you have you know, musculoskeletal misalignments that you can't change, you can work with the effects of it by stretching these different parts of your body. We're also building proprioception. 
our knowledge of our body and space through nerve bundles, through moving the spine in different directions. Okay, we did that more than three times. Let's go to the other side. A little toe side, inhale. Exhale, round three times, maybe a bit more. Now this time you're gonna feel the QL potentially, that wrap around um, fascia from the right hip to the right lower back. And when you're ready, go back to the center. If you want, you can stay there longer. Just do three more here. And you could do two on each or four, whatever works for your body. And then maybe stay and stretch the whole leg into the hamstrings. You might be feeling your feet quite a bit when you're ready coming up. Inhale. Now, when you come up, I'd recommend just bending the knee and just coming up really lazily. It's also for safety. And then comfortably, if possible, stepping back or you could step forward if it's too much. And just maybe pedal your feet out because that was quite a bit of work on those feet. All right, so left leg really... Um, Woken up now, let's go into the right. We're gonna to try to do the same thing on the other side. So with the left heel back, you can turn that foot out right away to give you more stability or step forward without doing that. So turn that out, I'm gonna do it this way and then stepping that right foot forward, whatever you can do in one step. You might be feeling that back half working as well. Parshva Uttanasana, inhale, arms coming up. So the arms could be sides, your arms could be front. You could interlock your fingers for even more work. Inhale. Exhale, forward bend. Up and down four times. That front knee can bend as you come forward. Your hands can come to a chair, a stool to blocks. And let's add that exhale starting position in between. You can skip that, but it's nice to add it. Two more times. Last time we're gonna stay. It's not comfortable staying, just keep it going up and down. Inhale, arching the spine. Three times here, exhale, center. Inhale, arching, try to bring your rib cage forward on your thighs and you can actually take your hands and do that if you like in your belly, a little bit longer on that thigh, and then exhale forward. So this is to help lengthen the spine and go deeper into the pose. Exhale forward. We're gonna go to what in most people is the easier side towards your big toe. Inhale, arching spine, feeling the groin perhaps on that right leg. Uh, for me, I feel it more on my left, so it's quite different. Just notice if there's a difference between sides. And that could indicate a twist in your spine um, if it's harder on one side, 
the twist could be away from that side. So for example, with me, my twist is naturally towards this left side. So doing the other side's harder. So around three times and then going to the other side, the little toe side, again, you can adjust that back foot. You can make it wider or uh, turn it in. Inhale, lengthening, exhale for a bend. Feel that stretch perhaps in that QL, the left side of the hip into the back. When you're ready from here, just step forward to Uttanasana. Bend your knees as needed. Inhale, just come up quite lazily. After that deep stretch and release. And the reason I do that is actually to ward against any back spasms that might happen from doing that quite intense work. Your, uh, your body might grip the, the tissue after doing that. So you just want to in my experience, just take it easy, especially as we age, not to force those um, weight-bearing exercises by coming up with your arms extended, etc. So just finding your place and notice if you feel a bit taller now, having stretched the legs and the, the hips, especially the sides of the hips, you might have a sense of feeling taller Okay, we're gonna to go to our next um, hip and back stretch. So left foot behind right. And this is good also for strengthening the ankles. If you have an ankle injury, this will be later on. Um, you might wanna do this just with your feet parallel or even seated in a chair if you have an ankle injury. Inhale, arms coming up to the sides, radiating like the sun. And let, exhale, let's just do an ohm forward. Oh. Possibly feeling that left hip stretching as you come down. Inhale, coming up. If this is too much, come to a chair just halfway. Oh. Inhale, coming up. Oh. Inhale, coming up. Adding Om Namo, this means I let go, I surrender. Om. Pause, halfway, and then Namo. All the way down, pause, inhale up. Two more times. Om. time. Oh. Stay in your forward bend if that's comfortable. Stretching that left hip on the side, the outside.
When you're ready, coming up, just lazily. And crossing the legs. Hopefully that didn't go into your knees in any unpleasant way. Just be mindful of that. If you ever feel uh, any information from any part of your body that says, I don't feel safe and I might feel uncomfortable later if I continue in this direction, just make sure you change the position because we don't want to increase suffering through our practice. We want to um, decrease it. Let's switch to the other side, just making sure that anything I'm offering is comfortable for your body. So just remember you're the primary teacher, I'm the secondary teacher here. Inhale, arms coming up as if you're radiating like the sun. Three ohms. Oh. Inhale, coming up. Oh. Feeling that right hip stretch, perhaps that foot that's behind you. Oh. Namo. Oh. Namo. Inhale up. Oh. time. Inhale, radiating like the sun, all directions, sweeping your arms through that radiant center of the sun at your heart. Exhale, waterfall down. Oh, na. And staying here. If it's comfortable, otherwise come out. Feeling that right hip, the foot that's behind, stretch through the side of the hip into perhaps the lower back. And after three to four breaths, just coming up and release. Again, just noticing how you feel in your legs, your feet, your hips, maybe a little bit more grounded energetically, physically. Maybe bending the knees or those second toes as you exhale, inhale, lengthening pulling up on the thighs, maybe lifting the toes, just helping you connect that root, that mula to the ground like a carrot growing into the earth. Let's just do that two more times. Exhale, release. And I just look at my feet, make sure they're parallel and inhale, stretching up. I'm bringing my big toe down and lifting the other toes. And last time, releasing everything. And then inhale. 
Philip. All right. Okay. Well, last two weeks we worked on balancing um, with legs moving in three directions. And this time we're going to do the uh, Chennai special. Just clicking a Zoom thing off there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, one of my students calls this the Chennai special. It's not called that in Chennai. It's a hip um, vinyasa that my teacher, Mr. Sridhar, created uh, for working on all aspects of the hip in terms of strength and flexibility. Um, so it's very much that balance of stiram strength and sukham softness, which is what the ancient texts tell us we need to find that balance of in our practice of both body and mind. It's always that balance. Which one do I need more of? Do I need to downregulate more? Do I need to upregulate more? Do I need to strengthen? Do I need to soften? So that's the constant meditation of a yogi. Where do I need to let go? Where do I need to tighten up? So I can get it just right, like the Buddha said, uh, like a sitar string, not too tight, not too loose, gives you beautiful music. So inhale, the arms coming up. I'm going to bring my feet together for this. I'm a little more far forward just so you can see me a bit here. And then exhale, you're going to bring your left leg up and your arms down just halfway, drawing your belly in. It's finding your balance. Inhale, arms to the side, opening the hips. Exhale, gathering to the center. I'm going to flex my toes towards my nose as I do this, just to add that piece. Palms together. As you inhale, pointing the toe, stretching back. Now, I've been corrected on this with my teacher. This is, um, was at one point part of my personal practice. So extending, you don't want to um, arch the back too much, but slight arch of the spine. And then exhale, coming back to Sama Stiti. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, arms halfway down as you draw your right leg up using your core strength from the pelvic floor to the belly button. So moving your leg with your core or your mula. Inhale, opening up, arms at the sides. Exhale, center. This is a great preparation for tree pose, by the way. So I always do this before I teach tree. Inhale, extending back. And again, I'll show the side view. So stretching up with the spine and then the back leg back. So the focus is more the glute rather than um, a big back arch. And then exhale, release. So you put your brain on your glute. Um, your glute max. Inhale, center. Exhale, halfway, meeting arms and leg at the center. Inhale, opening up. Shoulder blades together. Exhale, drawing to the center using the core strength. Inhale, extend back. Feel that glute and your lower back on the left side. Exhale, Samastiti, even standing pose, right back to your center. Round two, inhale. Oh no, this is round three, isn't it? Exhale. Inhale, open. Try to look right forward. You could have the gaze slightly down. Exhale, center, or look straight ahead and just notice the difference, how you feel looking straight ahead versus slightly down. Inhale. My teachers generally teach looking slightly down about two meters. Exhale, starting position. Last time, I'm just going to show it here so you can see a different view. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale, open. Exhale, center. Start to exhale before you start to move. Still exhaling at the end of the movement. Inhale, extend back. So straight up with your arms and then the leg back rather than a complete back arch. It's just a half one. Exhale, starting position. Other side, right, inhale. Exhale. Feel the belly drawing in is bringing your leg up. Inhale, open. Exhale, center. Inhale, extending back. Stretching your arms straight up. Feel that in your hip, your lower back. Exhale. Could do six rounds. We're just doing four for today. We're going to go straight from this if you're able to tree pose. If you need a break, take a break for a bend, whatever you need to do before you join us. Um, listen to your body. I'm not going to do a counter right away. So just standing on your right foot, just start to bring the weight into that foot and lift the other side. So your pose might just be here. If you can, turning the hip out and the toes on the ground. Or if you can, bringing your foot either just below the knee or above the knee. I'm just going to show here. This works better for my body. You can certainly use a wall for support on the side or in front or a chair. So just do whatever works for you to help you find that place. So it's usually called Prakasana. In other traditions, we call it Baragirtasana, I believe, if I'm remembering the name. It's a name of a, of a sage, sage king. And this is a pose of tapas or challenge. Kind of like in the West when we go rock climbing or downhill skiing, something that's a bit challenging in terms of the physical body. Inhale, coming up, whatever is challenging for you physically. It is said to build strength, resilience, the ability to do more, to go outside your comfort zone. And see if you can remain relaxed when you're outside your comfort zone. It's the essence of chapter 247, the sutra that talks about that. Exhale, release when you're ready. And hopefully I prepared the hips well for this. Um, I do sometimes will feel a little bit, oh, I don't want to stay there much longer. So whenever you get that message for your body, just come out because you don't want to overdo it. So it's that balance between uh, not doing too much and not doing too little. Other side, first of all, just balancing on that left leg. And that might be your pose today, especially if you have an injury, an ankle injury, you might just want to do this or even uh, turning the hip out. And then if you can go a little bit higher, Baragirtasana tree pose, pose of tapas, challenge, maybe hands to the heart. You could have your arms to the side from a bit more balance. You could hold one wall, a wall in front, a chair in front. Keep focusing on that exhale. Keep focusing on drawing the hips together using your muscles, not forcing the opening, but using your glutes to open your hips and really pull up. We've been working on that. Can you bring your arms up? And this is a great pose for fall resistance in terms of the muscular skeletal system, in terms of the nerves, proprioception. Focus on long exhale.
resting. Three to six breaths. And when you're ready, coming out. Notice if one side was harder than the other. And now we're going to do our counter pose, forward bend. So again, with a focus on the hips, I'm just going to encourage you, if you notice that one hip is a little bit different than the other, um, bringing that foot slightly back. So if you notice one hip um, is a little bit tighter than the other, you could bring that foot back or it might be the opposite side. Just play with it when you come forward. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So inhale, arms coming up. I'm gonna start with my feet center. So let's just start with the feet in parallel and exhale, come forward. So, so usually you'll feel it here. When you come forward, can you feel that one knee is harder to pull up than the other and one hip feels tighter than the other in this position? If that's the case, for me, it's my right, it will look left to you. You bring that foot slightly back and all of a sudden you'll feel your whole body shift to the center. Inhale, coming up. And if you don't have that imbalance in your spine, uh, you don't have to do that modification. Let's just go up and down. Exhale forward. Inhale up. Just do this in your own time. We're doing this as a counter pose. You can bend your knees at the bottom, just making it quite chill. Not too much strength work here. Just notice the effect on the hips, especially when you go into the full position. One of the hips may be feeling a bit tighter than the, the other, the lower back feeling tighter. Just doing this in your own time, four to six times, your own breath. And just finishing up. Okay. We're going to bring the legs wider. This is going to be our last standing asana. We're doing quite a bit of standing today. And here we are. So um, this depends on the class. So legs apart can be one leg width apart or even wider. Prasarita Pada Uttanasana, that spread footed forward bend. And you're going to inhale. This one is for working with the legs, the hips, the groin. And uh, it was inspired by um, something a physiotherapist gave to me. And then I showed my teacher in India and he's like, oh, this is how we do it. And I was like, oh, great. So you're going to get a mix of both. We're going to start Chennai and then I'll show you a little bit of a physio add-on that really helps the hips, but still works yogically. Inhale, arm center. Exhale, twisting to your left and coming down. Now, when you come down, you might want to bend that knee. I usually start with that, or you can keep it straight. Inhale, you can leave the arms lazy and then move them or move them right away in line with your ears. That's more weight. Exhale, starting to twist the other side. Exhale, coming forward. Again, if you want to take the weight out of the pose, bringing the, just the arms down the legs rather than straight ahead, that's much more challenging. You can bend the knee that will stretch the groin more, but also uh, make it a little bit easier. Inhale, coming up to the side, and then exhale, center, and come forward. Inhale, coming up, again, with or without the arms extended. Exhale, starting position. And I just encourage you to start on your easy side, whatever that is. Okay, so inhale, coming up. I'm gonna um, cue it classically left and right, but do the other side if that's better for you. Start to exhale, then start to twist towards your left, coming forward. You can keep that leg straight or bend it. And when you bend it, you actually get into the groin of the other side more. Inhale, coming up. 
I also like the bending of the leg for its effect on the knees. You're at the center as you come up. Exhale, start to twist to the other side, then coming down. So this bend of the knee is a modification. Might bring your feet wider apart as you go into it. Exhale, forward bend. This is the full pose, Parasati to Pada Uttanasana. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, starting position. Inhale, center. We're going to do three rounds. Exhale, this is our last one. Exhale, coming to your left. Inhale, up. Exhale, right. Inhale, up. Exhale, center. Inhale, up. Exhale, starting position. The fourth round, we're actually just going to stay in the position. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming to your left, and you're going to stay here. And stretch again. If you want, you can add some movement. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, you can bend that knee. This will be nice for um, the knee of the left side, but then get into the groin of the right. Inhale, lengthen, maybe straighten the leg. Exhale, bend. Doing that three to four times. Then you're going to come up fairly lazily. I'm just going to come up with one arm, the opposite arm to my leg. And exhale, other side. Staying here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend. When you bend that right knee, you're getting into the left groin. Inhale. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bend. Coming up lazily, one arm, then the other. Exhale, center. Again, I'm gonna come down lazily just because I'm doing bigger stretches now and the tissue might be a little bit working too hard. So I'm just gonna take the weight out with my arms, sliding down my legs and up. Maybe bending my knees. If you bend your knees here, you will also feel your groin. I invite you to turn your feet out if you like and just feel the difference when you bend your knees and straighten. You might prefer that. If you can, do keep your feet parallel. Notice one side working more than the other in terms of the groin. If you can, inhale, coming part way up, hands on the ground, exhale, Bring your weight over to the left foot. Bend the knee. Feel that opposite groin. Inhale, this is the part I've added on. Exhale, other side. So this is the add-on based on um, a physio exercise I was taught that apparently is taught to runners and uh, skiers for working on asymmetry of the gait. And I can see why, because it really works one groin at a time. Exhale. Now, if this is feeling too easy and you want to bring weight, you can bring the arms to the side. Inhale here. Exhale, bring the arms down. And you can twist to one side. Inhale up. Exhale, twisting to the other side. I'm just going to leave my arms here. It's my body saying it wants to do it this way today. And we're going to start coming down to the floor, twisting to that front foot. And finding your lunge. Now in this position, you can put a block or a pillow under that back knee. 
and just see if this is possible for your body to do today. Maybe coming up higher, the knee can go towards those toes so it's going beyond the ankle, that's totally acceptable. And stretching back and we're gonna switch sides to this, just a transition. Be careful with those knees. Another part of the body that um, the knees often will take the brunt of tight hips. So <laughs> the knees are meant to just kind of hinge um, back and forth. And uh, when you rotate them in all sorts of positions because of tight hips, um, they don't like it. So just staying here, a little bit of movement if you like. Just notice that in the psoas, they have flexors. When you're ready, coming to child's pose. This pose doesn't work for you. Come onto your back. I'm just gonna angle my camera down. There we go. And you might want to put a sweater on as we cool down for our last 15 minutes. Gonna, we've really worked the hips today, so I'm going to um, take advantage of it. So working on that hip opening again, bringing your left foot over your right. You're gonna inhale, open that left hip. And exhale, draw it across. Adikuma. Lie down, lie down. Inhale, open the hip. Lie down. Exhale, bring it across. Inhale, open. Exhale, bring it across. Now, if that's feeling really easy for you, so this is a wonderful one for arthritis in the hips or um, hip mobility, um, um, hip replacements, all sorts of things like that. If it's feeling easy, you can move into the classic figure four move. My teacher just calls this a version of apanasana, a knee to chest for the hips. And you can start doing this. Now I like this um, pillow or block under my back, no higher than the waist to help create a bit more space for the back so that the hip can open a bit more. This is my tight side, it really helps to do that. If you're very open in the hips, you won't need this, you can, as you inhale, come all the way down and open that hip a bit more. And then exhale, using your strength, come into the knee to chest. And with my left elbow, I'm opening that left hip. I'm flexing the toes towards the nose and I'm crossing above the ankle bone for um, the joints. If it, if it hurts in the knee at all, don't open as much. Just one more time, inhale, open. I'm just using a little bit of pressure. I'm trying not to twist my hip that way. I'm trying to keep my hips grounding down on that right hip side. Exhale, coming into your stretch. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So the right, inhale, open, exhale, cross it over. So if you have an injury uh, having fallen or um, an injury in that, right hip, ankle. This might be a good therapeutic move for you to try. OK, 
can keep that going. And sorry, I normally do that without the pillow, but I left it and actually that was kind of nice. Uh, moving to the other side, uh, sorry, same side, the figure four. So I've got my right ankle crossed over my left knee and then I bring the thigh towards me. And with my right elbow, I try to open that right hip as I exhale in and I feel the stretch in the piriformis, which wraps around the outside of the hip into the lower back. Inhale, release, you can come all the way down and then open that hip in that direction and then exhale, come towards you and open it with the elbow. And just finishing up. Now you can leave that pillow or remove it. Crossing the left knee over the right, arms at the sides. Inhale here, exhale coming towards your right. You don't have to come all the way. Inhale, center, exhale, other side. And notice this in the hips, the lower back, and even the upper back, neck, and shoulders. Inhale, center, exhale, other side. And when you're ready, just finishing up your last round. Coming to the center, inhale and then exhale, bring your knees to your chest and maybe holding those ankles or anywhere you can on your leg. And can you again feel that piriformis working, especially that left side. So um, the kids in the studios in Vancouver call this dolphin. Um, because of, it looks like, I guess, the tail of a, of a dolphin. A whale, whale, that's what they call it, whale. That makes more sense. Whale of a, the tail of a whale. There we go. I was like, that doesn't make sense for a dolphin. You can do it with a pillow under the lower back. That can feel good. And the higher you bring your legs, the higher you bring that tail, um, the more stretch it is. So I quite like this variation of Apanasana, knee to chest. And then other side, crossing the right knee over the left, inhale, center, exhale, come to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, right. So the right leg over the left. I think I might have cued that wrong. The other side. Inhale, center. Exhale, side. And just notice the effect on the hips, the lower back, the neck and shoulders. It will go into all of those places and maybe even the feet, especially, sorry, if you have a bunion, um, you might be feeling a little bit of pain on uh, one of those, on your big toe joints. So you might want to fold your mat over or even add a pillow or a blanket for more comfort. This is going to be a little bit intense. And when you're ready, come into the center. Exhale, knees to the chest, going into that whale tail. 
variation of a panasana on each chest, holding your ankles or anywhere you can on your thighs. Could even hold your feet. This is more intense still. And getting into that right piriformis. Puma likes to do yoga with me. He's gone to his usual spot. He likes to lie against me when I practice. So if you have a pet at home, you might find that. <laughs> and he knows I'm teaching. <laughs> All right, when you're finished, just knees to chest or happy baby. Before we move into our relaxation. If you like, also you can add Urdhva, Prasrita, Padasana, stretch those legs up. I think I'm going to do that variation for me so that you lengthen the legs after them being bent. You can also do happy baby, holding the feet like this and then lengthen. If this is too much uh, because of the length of your arms, hamstrings, you can use a belt to do the same variation. Inhale, extend, exhale, bend. Puma, lie down. That was for the dog. Okay, when you're ready, into your Shavasana, whatever that is for you. I've got a bolster here today, and I'm gonna put this under my thighs. And I'm going to open my hips and rest in this position. Just moving into breath awareness. I think you could be here for about three minutes. I tend to do a shorter Shavasana in morning practices. And when you're ready, starting to get ready to sit up by moving your legs and feet.
Bending one knee at a time to your chest. And coming on to one side. And if you like up to a seated position to close, otherwise you can keep lying down. And having done all those hip openers, you might actually feel comfortable um, sitting with open hips. I like to put one ankle under each knee to give my uh, knee support. Uh, you can also use blocks. Let's see if this little guy can sit. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. Just observing the natural rise and fall of the breath. And closing with Om Shanti. Namaskaram. Thank you very much. Just acknowledging this practice comes from India. The sacred language is Sanskrit, which I try to use as much as possible. And it has been shared with us this particular work through Yogi Krishna, Krishna Macharya. And he wished this work to spread around the world for the benefit of all. Thank you. 